Working with shellcode isn't as straightforward as it could be. There is no file format to use with common tools, so it requires a little extra work for debugging and assembly. Well, not anymore. In this video, I'll show you how to use SC Launcher to generate portable, executable, or PE files from your shellcode. This makes it possible to analyze those shellcode blobs with your favorite PE reversing tools, such as IDA Pro Free. Before we get started transforming our shellcode, please take a moment and hit that like and subscribe button. Comments are open as well, so let me know what you think of this video. Okay, let's get started. First things first, we need to have a blob of shellcode to work with. So I'm going to take this opportunity to point out several exercises that I have on my GitHub. You can find this GitHub called Malware Samples, and I'll provide a link down below in the description. The exercise that we're interested in is tracing shellcode execution from VBA macros. Now, analyzing the malicious document in this exercise is worth it alone. Suffice it to say, the macros end with memory being allocated, shellcode staged there, and the shellcode being executed. So it's a quite common flow here that we want to extract that shellcode from memory and perform additional analysis on it. There are a couple of things you need to know about the shellcode, though. First, you'll find it in sample.zip. You can download the zip file, and the password for this zip file is infected, all lowercase. The second, and this is a bit of a spoiler, so if you do plan on doing the exercise and you don't want to know anything further, then you're going to want to skip ahead a few seconds in this video. Mainly, these exercises can contain full solutions and walkthroughs. That way you don't get stuck. And if we fast forward to the end of the macro code analysis, so maybe not that much of a spoiler, um, you'll see that this is the address where the shell code is executed. 70D0000. That means that the entry point is at an offset of E5D. With shellcode launcher, we can adjust the entry point, so that way when we wrap it in a PE file, IDA Pro or any other disassembly tool will know where to begin analysis. Of course, if we weren't wrapping this in a PE file, we'd still want to know this information, so that, say, when we attached with the debugger, we'd know where to tell the CPU to begin executing our shellcode at. Okay, with that in mind, and with that shellcode downloaded, the next step is to run shellcode launcher and you can investigate the help information. You'll actually see there's two primary modes of operation. One is more of the traditional shellcode utility. That is, we can tell this utility to take our shellcode, allocate a region of executable memory, stage the shellcode there, and then before executing it, pause, allowing us to attach a debugger and begin the debug process. The feature that's relatively novel, particularly in the approach I took, is to create a PE file so that we can just analyze the shellcode as if it were a PE file. In order to do that, we're going to use three options. First is required. Dash F defines where the shellcode is going to come from, so the file that contains our shellcode. The second is dash PE. This tells SC Launcher to create a PE file from that input shellcode blob. Now, the final argument is also required in this case but only because our shellcode's entry point isn't the beginning of the shellcode itself. Since there was an offset that marks the entry point of the shellcode, we can define that using the dash EP argument. Once our arguments are ready, we can go ahead and tell SC Launcher to generate our PE file. The default output file will be called sc underscore output.exe. You can also use the dash O option to provide a custom name. I'm gonna open that output file with a hex editor. Here you can see all the telltale signs of a PE file to include the header, a slightly modified DOS stub message, and then information about the sections. The way that I've designed this tool is that the shell code will be added to a .txt section, starting where typically you'll find the .txt section at a raw offset of 400 hex or a virtual offset of 1000 hex. Now it's quite common to wanna to analyze that shell code using a disassembler such as IDA Pro. One thing you may have encountered in your time is that IDA Pro, at least the free versions, no longer support unstructured binary content. That is, we can't just give IDA Pro free our shellcode. However, now that it's wrapped in a PE file, we're free to use this tool for our disassembly needs. Of course, if you're working with other tools that don't have this restriction, then that really doesn't matter. In any case, you have the ability to analyze the shellcode as if it were a PE file. Recall that entry point that we adjusted? Well, you'll see as we scroll down, 
and I add line prefixes that our entry point is 401E5D, right? A thousand hex for the default location, the virtual address for our text section, and then an offset of E5D that we defined from the command line when we created this PE file. So not only did the analysis work now, auto analysis kicked in with IDA and disassembled our shell code, but we can also use this as an opportunity to perform debugging. We don't have to use the utility um, to go ahead and read the shell code, stage it in memory, pause execution, wait for us to attach with the debugger, resume execution, you know, set breakpoints and then resume execution. Uh, now we can set breakpoints. And again, I'm just using the free version of IDA with that breakpoint set. We can hit play and you'll see here, we've now broke at the beginning of our shell code. So we can debug this as we would a normal PE file as well. The goal here is to make analyzing shell code just a little bit easier. Hopefully this helps. You can find this project on GitHub if you're interested in how I actually create the PE file. Don't have to use an assembler or anything, um, as well as release binaries. You'll also find it as part of the default build into the Flare VM. Of course, I appreciate if you find any bugs to submit issues as well as feature requests. So everything's open on the GitHub. If you have any further questions, don't hesitate to leave those in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe this video if you enjoyed it. And as always, keep exploring.